is Team Savya. I am Chia Bagaria. I am Saurabh Baram. And I am Sahana Mohandas. And our data analytics project is the detection of sarcasm in textual data. Sarcasm is used in human communication in a mocking tone to express humor. It may be useful to teach computers to understand subtle forms of natural language like sarcasm to further improve these NLP systems. The detection and interpretation of sarcasm is difficult even for humans, hence such tasks may prove to be challenging. Current NLP systems process natural language extremely well, however, they take the literal meaning of sentences. To make these systems more human-like, it would be important to teach them to understand sarcasm and maybe even generate a few sarcastic comments in a conversation. Sarcasm detection can help enhance existing chatbots and help in filtering out the sarcastic reviews from technical forums, restaurant review sites, product reviews for e-commerce websites. The data set for our model was taken from a corpus, namely Natural Language and Dialogue Systems hosted by University of California, Santa Cruz. It's a labeled data set with around 2,300 sarcastic and non-sarcastic response each. We first clean the data set by removing stop words and discard sentences with less than four tokens as we believe a sentence that's too short cannot be sarcastic. Next, we perform tokenizing and stemming. Let's proceed with the feature extraction. We use the module text blob of Python to perform sentiment analysis on unigrams, bigrams and n-grams which are basically collections of one to n tokens. We also construct a term frequency and inverse document frequency vectors for finding the importance of tokens in the document. If we first learn the topics, then the classifier will just have to learn which topics are more associated with sarcasm and that will make the supervised learning easier and more accurate. To learn the topics, we are using latent Dirklet allocation. We also count the occurrences of exclamation marks, question marks, quotation marks, capital letters and different parts of speech in a sentence as a high frequency of these features such as the presence of sarcasm. We also consider the length of sentences as sarcastic statements are generally longer. Initially, we also counted the frequency of emojis in a sentence but deciding upon, we decided upon discarding this feature as it had an adverse effect on the accuracy and F-score of most of the classification models that are described later on. Up next, Sahana and Priya are going to talk about various classification models that we used. So, now that we've generated our features, we can use these features along with their labels to train a model, and we can use this model to predict whether a new given test sentence is sarcastic or not. We built eight such predictive models, and we'll look at all of them. Let's start with the naive base model. Naive base calculates the posterior probability, that is in this case, the probability of a sentence being sarcastic given its different feature values. The class with the higher posterior probability is taken as a predictive class. We implemented two uh, forms of naive base, that's the Gaussian and the Bernoulli naive base. And we implemented these models using the sklearn toolkit in Python. We got an accuracy of 66.9 and 69.8% respectively. Next, we went on to try the logistic regression model. Logistic regression is a two-class classifier that decides a class by comparing the probability it calculates with a given threshold probability. Logistic regression did pretty well with our data set, giving us an accuracy of 70.9%. Then, we went on to try the decision tree algorithm. And the decision tree algorithm learns using simple decision rules. We implemented this using the SQLearn toolkit in Python as well. And we got an accuracy of 60.69%. So here is a snapshot of the decision tree that was generated using our data set, and these are just the first four levels of our decision tree. Then we went on to try the random forest algorithm. So what random forest does is it creates many decision trees using different sample data, and each of these decision trees make a prediction, and the final prediction of a random forest is the most commonly occurring prediction. We got an accuracy of 71.6% using a random forest that had a hundred decision trees, and that was the best accuracy that we could get. Now Priya will be talking about the rest of the models. So next up is the k-nearest neighbor model. In this, the data units are classified based on the class with the highest frequency amongst the k-closest neighbors in the trained data set. For our model, a higher accuracy is received when k value is taken as 21 using the Euclidean distance method. When the data points have uniform weights, the accuracy was 58.5%. On weighing the points based on distance, we get an accuracy of 60.55%. We then implemented the support vector machines using linear and radial basis kernels, which gave accuracies of 65.47% and 54% respectively. So what a support vector machine does is it plots the data items on an n-dimensional plane where n is the number of features in the model. It then splits the data points by finding a hyperplane that can differentiate between the two classes very well. 
Then we implemented the artificial neural network for which we used the Python deep learning library Keras. The recurrent neural network is a sequential model layered with embedding LSTM and dense layers which results in an accuracy of 64.87%. On comparing the accuracy of the predictions received from all the models implemented, we see that the random forest model gave the highest accuracy of approximately 72%. An interesting observation we made while working on the project is that initially while extracting features, we also counted the number of emojis in each response text. This was assuming that the count of emojis would influence the sarcasm classifier. But in fact, it had an adverse effect on the accuracy and F-score of all the models. Getting to the individual contributions made to the project, the dataset selection, pre-processing and feature extraction was a team effort, after which each of us worked on two classification models individually. Thank you for watching the video.